Isn't it a great day to be a Christian? Yes. Open your Bibles to Amos chapter 7. Amos chapter 7. The title of the lesson this morning is God's Plumb Line. I asked Brother Johnny uh, before we started. Usually, uh, he'll get up on Sunday morning, he'll look at the bulletin on Facebook, see what the sermon's going to be about, and try to find some songs that go along with the sermon title. And I asked him if we're going to be singing about plumb lines this morning. Of course, the answer is no, because we don't have any songs in our book about plumb lines. In fact, when I typed the word plumb line in my computer to prepare my notes for the lesson this morning, it said that was a misspelled word because the word plumb line doesn't exist anymore. Now, it did back in 1611 when the King James Version was translated into English, but plumb line is no longer a word. Now it's two words, plumb and line. And the meaning is the same. A plumb is a weight. Well, actually, it's called a plumb bob. Uh, but that's a weight and a line is a string and you tie the plumb bob on a string and that makes a plumb line. And it's used to measure things. The word plumb line is found four times in all the Bible and all four times are in verses seven and eight of Amos chapter seven. So let's read those verses now. Amos chapter seven, beginning in verse seven. Amos writes this, Thus he showed me, and behold, the Lord stood upon a wall made by a plumb line, with a plumb line in his hand. And the Lord said unto me, Amos, what seest thou? And I said, A plumb line. Then said the Lord, Behold, I will set a plumb line in the midst of my people Israel. I will not again pass by them any more. And the high places of Isaac shall be desolate, and the sanctuaries of Israel shall be laid waste. And I will rise against the house of Jeroboam, with the sword. Now, this is the third of five uh, visions that Amos saw talking about the judgment that God was going to bring against Israel. And in this vision, the Lord's standing on a wall and he's holding a plumb line. Now, plumb line has two purposes. Uh, sailors use a plumb line. They take this weight that's got a string attached to it and they lower it till the weight touches the bottom. Then they can measure and see how deep the water is. That's not the usage that... <laughs> that God's talking about this morning. The other one is used by stonemasons and they will hang that line. See, the weight uh, is controlled by gravity and the weight will go point to the direct center of the earth and that line will be vertical. That's an exact vertical line. So if you want to build a vertical wall, you just line up your wall with that plumb line. You hold a weight and the string is straight and you get everything lined up with that and that makes it straight. So. A plumb line is considered to be a vertical standard. That's exactly vertical. Uh, and if its wall is not vertical, then it's not going to line up with the plumb line. Well, God had created Israel according to his standard, the plumb line. But Israel wasn't meeting the standard anymore. They hadn't been doing what they're supposed to be doing. And God said, I'm going to show them how far out of line they've gotten. I'm going to hold my plumb line and show them where they're supposed to be so they can see where they are. When stonemasons are building walls, they use a plumb line because they want it to be straight. Now, before we get too deeply into the lesson, uh, let's establish another point. If you're going to build a straight wall, the most important thing you need is a firm foundation because it doesn't matter how well you build that wall. If the foundation's not firm, it's not going to stay straight. It's going to sag. It's going to weave. It's going to, to bend. Uh, that's the point that Jesus makes in Matthew 7. When he's preaching the Sermon on the Mount, he's talking about the rich and foolish builders. Matthew 7, 24, Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on that house, and it fell not, for it was founded upon a rock. And everyone that heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them not shall be likened unto a foolish man which built his house upon the sand. And the rain descended and the floods came and the winds blew and beat upon that house and it fell and great was the fall of it. Now, we have a foundation. The foundation is the rock. We know that's Jesus. And to build our foundation on that rock, we need to hear and do what the Lord said. Uh, 1 Corinthians 3.11 says, For other foundation can no man lay than that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. So if we build our house on the rock, if that's our foundation, 
uh, then we know that it's not ever going to crack or sag uh, because Jesus is the perfect foundation on which to build. But we need to use the plumb line to make sure that what we build on that foundation is straight. So that gets us to our first question. What is God's plumb line? What does he use for measurement? Well, we're all building our lives day by day. We're all building according to some standard. The question is, what do we measure ourselves by? There are lots of different standards. Whether it's conscious or not, we're living our lives according to something. And there are a lot of different standards that different people use to build. Some build their lives based on the standards of accumulating worldly possessions. They measure how well off they're doing, how their life is going, but how much do they have compared to how much everybody else has. Am I keeping up with the Joneses? Am I doing as well as other people are? I've actually heard people say, whoever ends up with the most toys wins. That's the standard of worldly possessions. Remember Jesus' parable of the foolish farmer in Luke chapter 12? Uh, he had a good harvest, and instead of sharing it with other people, he said, I know what I'll do. I'll just tear down my barns and build bigger barns, and then I'll just eat, drink, and be merry, and I'll have enough to last for a long, long time. Do you remember how that ended up? Luke chapter 12, verse 20, But God said unto him, Thou fool, this night thy soul shall be required of thee. Then who shall those things be which thou hast provided? So we shouldn't use possessions as the standard by which we live our lives. Some build their lives or live their lives according to the standard of popular opinion. They don't want to be considered weird or different. They want to be included, so they try to stay close to the crowd. And that's their line, what everybody else is doing, what everybody else thinks. Uh, but the Bible says that that's not a good standard for us to build our lives on either. Exodus 23, 2 says, Thou shalt not follow a multitude to do evil. Uh, think about it. Noah is a good example of not following popular opinion. The overwhelming majority of the people in Noah's time didn't think what Noah was, was doing was a good idea. They had a different way of living. If he'd have lived according to the standards of the crowd, he wouldn't have built the boat. He wouldn't have done what God wanted him to do. Uh, we shouldn't build our lives according to the standard of what everybody else thinks is right. Other people build their lives according to the biases and prejudices of their loved ones. Uh, they know that maybe they shouldn't be doing what they're doing, but if they do differently, that's going to hurt somebody's feelings. I mean, I really love so-and-so, and, and I don't want to, to do something that's going to disappoint them, so I'll do it the way they want it done. And they live their lives according to something besides what they know is right. There are others that can be given, but... None of those is what God uses. That's not his plumb line. That's not his standard. Paul explained that in Romans chapter 12. Go to Romans chapter 12. Look at the first verse. Paul says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. Paul said we should be living our lives, we should be building our lives in a way that God is going to find acceptable. We should be building according to the right standard. Well, what is that standard? Well, let's keep reading. Verse 2 says, And be not conformed to the world. Well, that's not it. It's not how much worldly goods we can accumulate. It's not what the world thinks we should be doing. It's not what the people of the world would want for us to do. So that's not the standard. It says, And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Our lives need to be transformed so that we meet what's acceptable to God. That's the standard, the perfect will of God. That's the plumb line that God's going to be measuring our lives by. All our thoughts and all our actions need to be measured by God's word not man's opinion, not our desires, but by God's truth. 2 Timothy 3.16, all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished into all good works. God's word's profitable. Why? Because it shows us where we're wrong. It shows us where we're out of line. 
It allows us to make corrections so that we can develop, so that we can mature according to his standards, so we can live the way he wants us to. Look at Hebrews chapter 2. Hebrews chapter 2, first three verses. Therefore, we ought to live the more earnest heed to the things we are to give, the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard, lest at any time we should let them slip. For if the word spoken by angels was steadfast, and every transgression and disobedience received a just recompense of reward, how shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation, which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord, and was confirmed unto us by them that heard them. My brother just moved into a new house. And before he could move into the house, that an inspector that came in and looked at everything, made sure that it met code, made sure that it met up to the standards. And the first time he went through, he didn't like what he saw. And there were some things that had to be done differently. There were some things that they had to change so that it would fit the standard, so that it would meet the code, so that it would do what, so that it would be the way it's supposed to be. God's given us the code. He's given us the standards. He's told us what he wants us to do. Now it's up to us to build our lives according to his standards. Paul says, how can we escape the consequences of not building according to the Lord's standards? We must never stray away from God's plumb line. Proverbs 14, 12 said, there's a way that seemeth right to a man, but the in thereof are the ways of death. The reason there's a lot of confusion in the religious world today is that people are, are failing to use God's standards. Uh, they're not looking at his word of truth. A lot of people base their religion on what my preacher said or what mama always said or what I heard, what my church teaches instead of what does the Bible say? What is God's standard? Go to James chapter 1. James chapter 1, verse 22 says, But be ye doers of the word, not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. For if any man be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he's like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass. For he beholdeth himself and goeth his way, and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was. There are too many people that read the Bible, but they don't allow it to guide them. They don't allow it to change them. They look in the mirror and they say, whoa, that needs to be fixed. And then they walk away and don't fix it. They don't change anything. Uh, what would you think of a mason that's building a wall? He puts the plumb line out there. He says, well, that wall's crooked. And then he just keeps on building. He doesn't do anything to make it right. He doesn't correct what's wrong. Sadly, far too many people have that casual attitude towards the scriptures. Well, the Bible may say that, but I don't believe it. Uh, we need to accept God's word. That was a lot of talk to make one point. That's the first point. God's word is the standard. Second point is that the one that delivered that word, the one that established that plumb line is the one that's going to be doing the judging. God set the standards and he's going to be the one to see if we meet it. God told us exactly what he expects. I told you earlier that the inspector came and looked at my brother's house before he could move in. You know those things that needed to be changed? Uh, they were in the code before they were built wrong. Before they did it the wrong way, they knew what they were supposed to be doing. They'd been given the standards. It wasn't a surprise test. There wasn't anything that said, oh, well, you didn't know this, but they knew ahead of time what the codes were. Uh, the things that had to be corrected were in violation of things that had already been given. They were already written. We've been told how to build. We've been told what the right foundation is uh, if we are not keeping God's standard, if we're not meeting the plumb line, it's because we're not doing what he said to do. Look at Isaiah chapter 28. Isaiah chapter 28. Isaiah says, Therefore thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I lay in Zion for a foundation, a stone, a tried stone, a precious cornerstone, a sure foundation. He that believeth shall not make haste. We've been given the right foundation. We know what we're supposed to build on. We're supposed to be building our life on Jesus. And we've been given the standards by which we're supposed to be building. And we know that the one that set the standard is going to be the judge. Look at the next verse. Judgment also will I lay to the line and righteousness to the plummet. And the hail shall sweep away the refuge of lies and the water shall overflow the hiding place. God says, I gave you the foundation. 
I told you how to build, and I'm going to put the line on it and see if you're meeting the standard, if you're doing what you're supposed to be doing. And whatever's built that's not according to his standards is going to be destroyed. The plumb line always hangs straight. If your building is not meeting the plumb line, you don't just disregard the plumb line. You need to fix what you're building. You need to fix your life. Uh, we know the standards. We know where our lives are not in alignment with God's plumb line. So it's our responsibility to make the corrections, to make the changes. Let's go back to Romans chapter 2. Romans chapter 2, beginning in verse 1. Paul writes, Therefore thou art inexcusable, O man, whosoever thou art that judgest, for when thou judgest another, thou condemnest thyself, for thou that judgest dost the same things, but we are sure that the judgment of God is according to truth against them which commit such things. Paul says, you don't look at God's word and say, oh, you folks need to change. You look at God's word and say, I need to change. I'm doing the same things I'm complaining about them about. I need to fix me. God's judgment is always going to be true. He's always going to use the truth. It's up to us to look at ourselves and compare what, how we're living, to how God wants us to live. This truth revealed in the Bible. John 12, verse 28 uh, says, He that rejecteth me and receiveth not my words hath one that judgeth him. The word that I have spoken, the same shall judge him in the last day. Are we doing what Jesus said to do? If we're not, we're not meeting the standards. We're not living according to his will. He said they'll judge him in the last day. And we're given a glimpse of that judgment in Revelation. Look at Revelation chapter 20. Revelation chapter 20, verse 12 says, And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were opened, and another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. Now with human judges, sometimes the laws are not applied fairly. We know that there are crooked judges, uh, but that's not the case with God. God always seeks justice. When God applies his plumb line to our, to our lives, there's not going to be any uh, partiality shown because we know that God's no respecter of persons. Sometimes with human judges, errors are made. We see about people appealing their cases because there were mistakes made in the judgment. God won't ever read the measurements incorrectly. God wrote the standards. Galatians 6, 7 says, Be not deceived, God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, he shall... That shall he also reap, for he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption, but he that soweth to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. It's a simple matter. God has a, a plumb line. He has a standard, and his standard is the truth. And it's up to us to meet his standards, because we're going to face judgment. We're going to be inspected. We need to know, are we holding close to the line? God's the judge, and if we're not found meeting his standards, then we're not going to go to heaven when that judgment happens. And that gets us to our final point, point three. It's far better to apply God's plumb line as we build, as we go. It'd be foolish for a stonemason to wait till after he finishes a building and say, okay, I got the building finished. Now let me check and see if it's straight. You don't do things that way. He doesn't wait till the building is finished and then say, oh, that second row of blocks was crooked. You check it as you go. You make sure that what you're building is in line with the standard. Uh, it's just as foolish for us to live our lives that way and then look back with regret and say, oh, there's some things I wish I'd done differently. There's some things I did that I know are not according to God's word. We need to be measuring as we go. Go to 2 Corinthians chapter 13. 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 5, Paul says, Examine yourselves. Whether ye be in the faith, prove your own selves. Know ye not your own selves, how that Jesus Christ is in you, except ye be reprobates. Paul says, examine yourself. Are you meeting the standard? Is Jesus living in you? If he's not, you're a reprobate. Uh, in other words, you're crooked if you don't have Jesus living in you. But now's the time to be making those measurements. Now's the time to be checking it out, and not when it's too late to make changes. That's how Paul did. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 9. 1 Corinthians 9, verse 27, Paul says, But I keep under my body and bring it into subjection, lest that by any means, when I preach to others, 
I myself should be a castaway. Paul says, I correct myself. I check on myself regularly. He said he buffeted his body daily. He's constantly looking at God's standard and trying to get, keep himself in line. Paul didn't live a perfect life, but Paul constantly struggled to do what God wanted him to do. But before we can do that, we got to know where the line is. And Paul told Timothy how to do that. Look at 2 Timothy chapter 2. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15, Paul says, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Study God's word so you'll know where the line is. Study God's word so you'll know how you're supposed to be living. Uh, to make sure we're in line, we need to make sure we're keeping God's standards. You know, there's a standard in just about every endeavor uh, of life. Uh, sports, they have rules. I referee volleyball, and before every match, I have a little chain, and I go and measure the net, make sure that the net is the right height. And I had several places I said, your net's three inches too low. you got to raise the net because everybody plays by the same standards. In baseball, the bases are always the same distance apart. It doesn't matter which park you go to. The pitcher is always the same distance from home plate. In basketball, all the goals are all the same size. They're all hung the same distance from the floor. In science, there's exact systems of weights and measures. Carpenters have rules and levels. Masons have plumb lines. Uh, there are standards in life, and God has a standard. And it's there for a reason. To meet God's approval, we've got to meet his standards. To meet God's standards, you need to be a Christian. The only life worth living. The only death one would dare to die. I mentioned there's standards in all areas of human, of human endeavor. Can you imagine if there weren't? What if we didn't have any standard time? What if everybody just looked up at the sky and said, oh, it's about noon. Uh, how about plane schedules and train schedules and basketball schedules and all the events that we do? If everybody could set their own standard, how organized could we be? What time do you think we would have started services this morning if everybody just looked at the sun and said, well, I guess it's about that time. We've got standards. We have something that we have to meet. Uh, how would sports work if there weren't any rules? If everybody could just play the way they wanted to play? We've got set standards for everything else, and God has set standards for obedience to his will. There are some people that have implemented their own. There's some people that think God's too strict, said, surely God would want me to be happy. Or surely God would understand if, or I know God said this, but, or how could a loving God allow people to go to hell because he gave us the standards. He doesn't want anybody to go to hell. He told us what he expects, and then he sent Jesus down here to die so that we could meet those standards because we can't do it by ourselves. Those people must not have read the standard. Jesus said himself in Matthew chapter 7, beginning in verse 21, Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name, and in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works? And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. God's standard for salvation is the same today as it was on the day of Pentecost when the church was established. People need to hear God's word, Romans 10, 17. They need to believe that Jesus is the Christ, John 8, 24. They need to repent of their unforgiven sins, Acts 3, 19. And publicly confess that Jesus is the Messiah, Romans 10, 9, and 10. And then in order to have their sins forgiven, they need to be washed away in the Waters of baptism, as they're baptized into Christ, Acts 2.38. If you've never done those things, you can today. If you're already a Christian, if you've got your life built on the right foundation, uh, just because you made the right start as you began your journey, doesn't mean that you're still maintaining that standard today. We can all get off course. We need to heed Paul's advice to Timothy and study so we'll know that we're staying close to that line. If you know this morning, maybe you're a little crooked. Maybe you're not doing what you need to be doing. Maybe you need to make some changes. If you realize you don't meet God's standards, you can make that change this morning. Won't you do it right now? We stand together as we sing.